So you have heard two persons actually approach Jesus and ask him to do something for them. Well, the first one actually, she was sent at the second one, the first one, uh, Jairus, and the second one was a woman. She wasn't really um, asking Jesus, but she was actually kind of, you know, drawing herself to Jesus, believing that a miracle could happen to her. Now, we have heard that the synagogue official asked Jesus to lay his hands on his dying child, and the elderly woman also to let Jesus, uh, you know, I mean, she was also asking to cure her of her hemorrhage for 12 years. Now, what makes them draw to Jesus uh, in this particular um, situation in their life? Is it actually a hope of miracle or a word of comfort in their afflictions? So these are like, the questions that we might gonna ask um, ourselves for these two individuals asking um, help for Jesus. Again, is it actually a hope for miracle or a comfort in their own afflictions? I think it is both. Now, Jesus actually gives them hope, and especially to people with desperate or helpless circumstances, where there seems to be no human cause for it because his hope is directed to God. He speaks, of, he speaks words of hope to them. To the woman, he says, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. Jesus also gave divine hope to a father who had just lost a beloved child. And he is considerably courageous to go to Jesus and even ready also to receive the scorn of his neighbors and even kin. Even hired mourners laugh at him in scorn and their grief is devoid, is devoid of any hope. But again, in our story today, Jesus probes them wrong, probes the mourners wrong, and takes the girl by the hand and delivers her from the grasp of death. Now, I remember actually the writing from um, Peter Kersologos, a fifth century uh, church father, comments also on this particular miracle, he said, that this man was a ruler of the synagogue and versed also in the law. He had surely read that while God created all other things by his word, man had also been created by the hand of God. He trusted therefore in God that his daughter would be recreated and restored to life by that same hand which he knew had created her. He who laid hands on her to form her from nothing one more, once more lays hands upon her to reform her from what had perished. Well, she was actually, this, the, I mean, Jairus actually was hoping and believing that Jesus actually can do more from his child because he had hope. Hope actually is essential for our Christian life. And we have a right on duty also to be confident that the God who has loved us and called us to eternal life will never abandon us. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says to us that at baptism, God plants in every Christian the theological virtue of hope. The hope that Christians are given is a divine gift to us. It is not a shallow human wishing, but a sure confidence that God himself gives us power to exercise. His grace calls us to make acts of hope, truthfully speaking, the confidence in him that he wishes also to have. He actually invites us all to make our lives stronger and gladder by refusing ever to cease hoping in him. Of course, just like also these two fellows, these two um, individuals in our gospel story today, we also needed, or we also need to approach the Lord with expectant faith. Because as I think it was also the uh, second reading from the Sunday's gospel, as St. Paul was mentioning, three things will remain, faith, hope, and love. Of course, even though the greatest of it actually is love, but we also have to adhere the hope that God has been given to us because as I have mentioned, 
it is something that is not shallow. It is something that we can firmly get hold onto. Amen. Bless you, Lord, you of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, this will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, this will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things giving us all a share in his fullness for though he was in the form of god he emptied himself and with the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation therefore he has been exalted above all things and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation and so with angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. 
For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Vincent our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mother Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as vows, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, God, Almighty Father, Father, in the the unity of the Holy Spirit, Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are the skull to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am the worthy of the Christian to undermine 
but on this side the word in my soul shall be there. Please stand. Let us pray. Nourished by this redeeming gift, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> uh, just before the final blessing, um, if you don't really mind also to uh, stacking the chairs back again on that side. 
after we use it. Uh, since also the school is already uh, back uh, this today, starting today, um, we, you know, we, because we are also entering the school premises around this time. If um, please also uh, please don't also get offended if someone is telling you, especially the schools or even sometimes us, to uh, just enter actually in the in the hall maybe around nine o'clock exactly nine o'clock because the coach people are still here at that time. So don't get offended with that one, if, you know, because it's just actually for school's protection. That's actually the, the uh, child protection law uh, given to us by the government. Um, uh, with the, let's just gonna be hoping that, you know, the church will be finished uh, um, maybe two weeks times, or let's just gonna be praying for that one to, to have it. <laughs> As I have mentioned, let's have hope. <laughs> Okay, we pray for that one. So hope from God actually is not deceptive anyway. So let's just, let's just get to be hopeful. Okay, now if you don't really mind, as I mentioned, if you can also put the chairs back uh, on the side, please do not block also the the door, the uh, thing there, um, so that the coaches can have access still. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Together we say the Hail Holy Queen. Hail Holy Queen.